Welcome to TSU Sports Show. Welcome to the TSU Sports Show. I'm your host, Tamer Knight. We have yet another packed episode covering all things TSU athletics. Plus, you know we like to have fun here. We'll chat with the high school football stud who not only played multiple positions on the field, but was crowned homecoming and prom king. Plus, you'll meet a basketball player who wanted to be a cheerleader at some point. You have to stick around to hear why. It just didn't work out. And you know, as always, we'll explore the rich archives of TSU to highlight a legendary Fighting Tiger football player whose son is carrying the torch for his father's legacy here on campus as a mathematics professor. Come along as we explore the Tiger Walk. Jonathan Giles probably could have been a basketball star, but he was drawn to football, the sports his father played in college. The Tigers' wide receiver was an all Big 12 choice at Texas Tech before finding his way here at TSU. Jonathan's father, Lonjo Giles, the video coordinator for TSU Athletics, played at the University of Houston. Those two have a fun debate about who's the better player. Who's the better football player? Well, I always tell it <laughs> that I was the better football player, but, but he's definitely the better a, a football player, especially playing against a better talent. Uh, uh, I grew up in the country, uh, so I played on the uh, 3A football team compared to his 6A football team, so much, much better talent. Uh, not, not to say that we didn't play football back when I was playing, because I always felt like that, uh, uh, you know, back when I played, we had to play both ways, offense, defense. His, he could just play offense, you, you know. So, uh, so like I say, he is the better uh, football player. <laughs> I mean, the stats will really tell me who's the better football the player. The stats is going to show him. <laughs> the stats is going to show him. Now, but in your mind. But in my mind, I always tell him, hey, I am the better. I'm faster. I always tell him I'm faster than he is. Well, out of high school, I was, I was a three-star athlete, so I went to Texas Tech to play receiver, even though I played quarterback in high school. Uh, I played at Tech for two years. Then I transferred from Tech to LSU. I had to sit out that first year, and then I played that second year. And then I had a chance to come back home to TSU. So I finished my grad year here at TSU. Okay, and heard you were a star back in Mo City at Elkins High School. Talk a little, about, a little bit about that and your transition from quarterback to wide receiver. In high school, I was, I guess you could say the star. I was a homecoming king and prom, and prom king. Um, of course, I first started playing QB in high school. I always played receiver growing up. But in high school, uh, they switched me to QB. So that was a little bit of change, a little bit of, you know, a little adversity here and there. But it was also fun just experiencing a new position and having the ball in your hands all the time. When he started in junior high, it was like, wow, you know, the coach said, hey, man, he's good, you know. Uh, and then when he got to high school, the, his freshman year, he was a receiver, uh, had 303 yards. And I was like, wow, you, you know. But then after that, you know, the coach, his head coach called me and him in and said, hey, we, we have three good receivers, nobody to throw the ball to him. So he said, hey, I'm going to make Jonathan a quarterback. And me and him fell out because I said, a quarterback? I don't really think he can throw the ball. Can he throw the ball? <laughs> you know, so then the head coach said, yes, he, he can throw the ball. So, What's next? Do you have professional aspirations? My dream has always been to play in the NFL. I've been watching football since I can remember. Uh, I, I'm not used to, I wasn't, you know, like the normal kids watching SpongeBob and Tom and Jerry and all that. I was always watching ESPN, telling my dad what happened in this game, this game. So I've always had a dream of playing professional football. There is nothing wrong with childhood cartoons. <laughs> I just have to say. So of course, once I get done with my football career, I want to be a high school coach. And uh, a lot of people ask, why not college? And because I'm more of a family guy. So I feel like in high school, I have a more chance, more time to spend with my family. So that's why I say high school. High school well, let's college. talk a little bit about that. Family guy, <laughs> what does that mean? What does family mean to you? Family is everything to me. Uh, it's, 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 not, it's, not, it's, it's something you can't have. It's something you, cannot, you can't live without. Um, my mom and dad have been in my life since I was born. Uh, I'm so thankful for my mom, my dad, my brothers. So I've, I've always been around my family. So. Family is very important to me, so any chance I can, I can go see my family, especially being at home now, I always will. 
when he was little, he was always around. I, I couldn't get rid of Jonathan. He was always around me. Then here, it, it, it's totally different, you know. I, I try to get him. I say, Jonathan, won't you come on by, you know, when he come by? Well, what, you know your room back there. Come, won't you come on and spend the night? <laughs> you know, so, so it's a little bit different now. He done grown up now. <laughs> No lunch dates. <laughs> no, very seldom he come out and, and, and eat. And Jonathan, uh, I thought he was going to be a basketball player uh, because coming up through uh, when he came here with me, you know, he was always down here on the court playing basketball, you know, uh, playing as, as, as little kids during that age, just running around playing basketball, nothing serious. When he got to uh, middle school, there was a team out in Fort Bend. It's a lot of his friends that went to middle school with him, they had a team. And when he was with that team, you know, he was, they was real good. So I was like, man, we followed them everywhere, you know? <laughs> and when they went to state, we, hey, we right there. So I thought he was gonna play basketball. As a matter of fact, I wanted him to play basketball. I first started playing sports, it actually was basketball. Uh, I started playing basketball. I think it's in the sixth grade, I played AAU. Uh, and then I remember just always been in the car with my dad. We always talk about football because my dad played football. He was, we always argue about who was the better football player in the car rides. Um, I think I'm the better football player now, but we used to always talk about football in the car rides. On our, just any, any, anywhere we would be, we always talk about football. And uh, I woke up one day, we was riding around, and I was like, I want to play football. We're just getting started here on TSU Sports Show. When we come back, We'll head to the Tigers' den to hear just why cheerleading didn't work out for women's basketball Ataya Bridges. Plus, Cross Country's Jose Gonzalez will join us here on TSU Sports Show. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for more TSU Sports Show. Welcome back to TSU Sports Show. Here's this week's TSU Ticker, brought to you by Cox Pradia Law Firm. Cox Pradia, limits, we have none. The Alabama Heat cut Ataya Bridges' cheerleading aspirations short at a young age. Instead, she took her talents inside, where she's been balling on the court ever since. What age did you start playing basketball? I started playing at six. At six. It was me and my pops. At first, I wanted to be a chili like my mom, but it was too hot outside, so I took the turn to the basketball court with my dad. He started training me, like, steps and heels. Um, on, on, like, Fridays or something, he'll tell me to get up, like, always early in the morning, before school, after school, like, just always grinding. So I fell in love with the game after I saw I was good at it. So what do you think about this Texas weather? Okay, well now I'm 22 years old, I'm used to it, but being a child six years old, I was like, no, I want inside, <laughs> inside. What's that tattoo on your leg? Just talk a little bit about that. Uh, I got it, um, it's a tiger with the face, like in a rose, lion hearted. Um, I got that because I feel like I'm small, but I have the heart of a lion. and. A lot of times people sleep on that when they see me, they be like, oh, she's little. But I have heart on the court, like, and heart is hard to beat. So I just took that and added my twist to it and made a tattoo. So when people, like, when I'm on the court and they see it, I know they be looking. So I feel like I give them a warning there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I'm small, but I tend to play big. That's I can't big. say that. Like, I'm a rebounder. I'm always going hard. Like, I feel like it's not always about the talent, it's about just your drive and just keep on going at it and not being a quitter. You're from Alabama. You could have went anywhere in the South, um, mm -hmm. any HBCU, but why did you come to TSU? I got here on campus and everything seemed like how everything is back at home in Alabama, like a family, just the experience, the HBCU vibe. So I was like, yeah, it's a, it's a must. And plus I have um, some family here who I know, so. What's one thing that uh, sets Texas apart from Alabama? Uh. It's huge, I'll tell you that, the traffic. Um, in Alabama, it's just two lane roads going up or down. Everybody's cousin, you know everybody there. You know, in Houston, it's a variety of people. So I would definitely say this, the population, the traffic, for sure. 
If you could bring one thing from Alabama to Texas, what would it be? The food. From I, Alabama? Yes. Um, in Alabama, like, I know this might sound bad, but it's a lot of fried food. We eat pig feet, pickled eggs, fried fish, like everything. Like, I would bring the food. But Texas is known for its food, and you mean to tell me? It's different, though. Alabama has a different twist to it. The Alabama food is just different. It's different. It's different. It's like your grandma cooked it, like your grandma cooked it different. What has it been like, you know, being coached by uh, Cynthia Cooper? Were you a fan of her before, you know, you were even able to play D1 basketball? Uh, I would have to say yes. I've heard of her before. Um, and then when I found out there was, there was going to be our head coach, I went to her highlights and I was like, oh, she cold. Like, so I, I thought of it as an opportunity for me to just come in and learn, you know, and add to my game from that, so. Uh, well, it definitely has been a learning experience, uh, just playing under Cynthia Cooper. Like, my first year here, I, I had to come in and adjust, like, to her playing style. And um, in my opinion, it wasn't hard because I have the speed and, like, I feel like I would describe my game as a defender. So with me coming in, um, it was easy for me to just pick up the ball to pressure people and use my speed, you know, to contribute to the team. And I feel like there was a plus on Coach Coop's end. So I feel like I just came in and I had a, a big uh, help with the team. So she definitely has that drive and anything below, uh, how can I put this? She can definitely tell if you're underachieving and she doesn't accept that so her drive for the game is on a whole nother level and that's a plus you know to have a coach who's gonna push you to be your best to, you know to excel every day so she definitely has that fire behind her i have to say cross country may or may not have been jose gonzalez's purpose in life however he credits his high school coach for changing his life Architecture and driving extremely long distances are just two components that define Jose Gonzalez. How long have you been doing cross country? Uh, I'd have to say for sure since freshman year of high school. Freshman year, I was introduced by a coach my eighth grade year um, that was coaching in high school. His name is Coach Mike Hernandez. Great coach, definitely changed me because I wasn't a I wasn't a runner. I wasn't that wasn't my purpose at all in life. Um, definitely, definitely helped me grow for sure. So for about, let's say four plus three, seven years, seven, eight years, I've been running. And it's not easy though, it's not easy, but for sure, came a long way. What do you feel like your purpose in life really is? I mean, outside of cross country. Outside of cross country, um, I would have to say maybe coaching. Um, I definitely do love it. Um, by my, even by my freshman year going into like my second semester of high school, I was already the guy nominated to be captain going into my sophomore year. And I also on the side uh, with my father, uh, we have a construction business. So I also love architecture stuff and just planning out and all that. So that's something else that I've, I've been looking forward to since I was little as well. So we do from anything from the floor to the roof, everything. We know we're knowledgeable about it. My father's been doing it for more than 20 years, and he obviously he showed me the ropes, and I also I do that in between classes sometimes, or even after racing, or you know I go and help my dad out, of course. But what else but, is in your bag or uh, up your sleeve, I should say? Um, honestly, I mean I to drive like long distance. So like in the summer when we have our training and stuff like that, when we go out with the team and we go because we've already been to Colorado, Arizona, um, New Mexico, and we train in high elevation, and I personally. I mean, I've driven like 18 hours, like just myself. Do you and stop? Obviously, it's to put in gas. Gas, but like, <laughs> I mean, like, no, dude, no, I just no hotel. No, just the whole way. No rest area. No, the whole way. It's it's just knowing. I mean, with running, I mean, when we run, we run without music. I mean, it's more about like a mental thing. We run for up to 16, 20 miles, and like in one day without stopping. And it's more of a knowing how to control your body and knowing how to stay relaxed the whole way. Anyone that thinks running 16 miles is hard, say I, I, <laughs> and you like to drive long distance. So a word to define you would be longevity because yeah. you can go for a long time. Yes, I can. And you're driving 18 hours, you're running 16 miles. 
some endurance. Oh yeah, for sure. There is still more TSU Sports Show to come. When we come back, history class will officially be in session or mathematics if you prefer. Dr. Holmes will dig deep into his archive to highlight his late father, Ernie Holmes. We'll be right back here on TSU Sports Show. Stay tuned for more TSU Sports Show. the best defenses in NFL history without mentioning the Pittsburgh Steelers 1970s dynasty. The Steel Curtain, the Steelers dominating defensive line of Ernie Holmes, Mean Joe Green, L.C. Greenwood, and Dwight White served as the backbone for the team, which won four Super Bowl titles in six years. Ernie Holmes, a Texas native and TSU graduate, left behind a legacy that his son, Dr. Roderick Holmes, is so very proud of. The TSU math professor recalls growing up in Houston while his father played for the Steelers. Let's visit the TSU archives. It was hard for me because, you know, you had the Oilers back then, you know, and the Steelers and the Oilers used to play each other. They win the same division. And so it was a, a nice little rivalry and in fact, um, you know, we kept knocked them out of the playoffs a couple of times. I say we, the, the, like I was part of the, the team. <laughs> but the Steelers knocked the Oilers out of the playoffs a couple of times. And I used to have to, you know, defend off classmates. They used to want to attack me because, you know, the Steelers, you know, knocked their beloved Oilers out of the playoffs. In fact, in 1976, uh, when they lost to the Raiders in the AFC Championship game, I was in Pittsburgh with him. He was taking me around. I think one of his teammates got uh, married, so he took me to the wedding reception. And I just remember the, the still the organization and you know going to, the, to going to the Pittsburgh facility. I mean, that was an awesome time being you know part of uh, you know the Steeler Nation and with you know Pittsburgh was just you know uh, developing. And it's not it wasn't the Steeler Nation as it is now because they hadn't won anything but two championships, but now, you know, Pittsburgh has six championships, you know, and so it's great being part of Steeler Nation. He was an ordained preacher, which uh, kind of shocks people because everybody remember my dad as being this, you know, mean uh, offensive line, I mean, defensive tackle, you know, that was, you know, sacking the quarterback, you know, there are pictures a uh, film on, on YouTube of him sacking Roger Staubach and all uh, those kind of stuff. But, you know, he would probably tell you, hey, you know, he's just a uh, he just nobody trying to tell everybody about uh, somebody that can save anybody. He was a youth pastor. Uh, he was big on, you know, um, making sure that you got a good education. He was big on education. He made sure that me and my sisters and brothers, we, he, he, that was one, one thing he wanted us to. He wanted us to get a good education because, you know, TSU gave him a scholarship. And so he wanted to use TSU's vehicle to get us to where we needed to go. He, he used to take me around with him to class. Uh, he actually attributes me being in class with him uh, for the reason why I earned my PhD. He said apparently I was paying attention in class because he wasn't, you know. So, I mean, he, said, he actually said that at, at my wedding and when I got married in 2003. My dad would actually work out and train in Jasper because it was very hilly and I remember uh, one time we drove to Newton and we dropped him off at this, um, this, um, this store and he had on these gray sweatpants and gray sweat top and stuff like that. And he told us, I'll see y'all later, right? I'm like, okay, I'll, okay, we'll see you later. It was like eight o'clock that night, he came. I'm like, where you been? And so he took off his warm up pants and warm up shirt and he started wringing them and just a puddle of water just was there because he just just he, that way you do he'd go run through the hills and run through you know the uh, um it wasn't i wouldn't say mountains but you know run up and down the dirt roads because they ain't have any they ain't have cement roads like we have in the city they had dirt roads and stuff like that so it was kind of uh, fun uh, uh visiting him and and the family in jasper it's amazing being here in the heart of houston texas TSU is really the land of opportunity. 
I have expanded my network. With career services, been a huge help. Everyone here has your best interests. It's a supportive environment for the faculty. You just kind of get a feeling when you know, like, this is your home. I joined the program and it's been one of the best decisions I've made in my life. Stay tuned for more TSU Sports Show. Stay tuned for more TSU Sports Show. That's going to do it for this episode of TSU Sports Show. I sure hope you enjoyed it as much as we did, and you'll come back and join us next time. Stay connected to the Tigers and go support these outstanding athletes at upcoming games or events. I'm Tamara Knight. Thanks for watching. You're watching TSU Sports Show. TSU, excellence in achievement.